I mean, considering we're not doing what that team did, it's still it's still cool to be able to go into the postseason in college. But I think overall, until we get to a conference championship, we won't we won't have that same feeling. Welcome into Griffin Sports Spotlight. I'm Brandon Zenner. He is football coach Matt Williamson. That was sophomore Tyler Basket ahead of the Griffins trip to the Live United Bowl on Saturday. Coach, you guys have uh, been idle, just practicing for a few weeks. How excited you uh, to get back on the field and uh, see you guys hit someone else? Well, it's 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 gonna be really fun. It's it's been good. I, you know, like in the game of coaching, you know, you're on the road recruiting, you're in offices watching film and stuff. Just being out, be able to practice with these guys, and yeah. you feel like as a coach, you feel kind of like a caged gorilla, you know. But <laughs> we're able, you know, extra three weeks of practice, and then we get to actually compete again. And that's what it's. That's why you know. That's why I'm here. That's why this team is put together. Is that we we want to go out and compete, and that's one of the best feelings in the world is compete and compete to win. That's right. In case you missed it, Missouri Western will play in the Live United Bowl in Texarkana, Arkansas. The Griffins six and five will take on Southern Arkansas. They were eight and three in the Great American Conference, finished just outside of contention for the playoffs. Just what's the excitement level of facing a team that is outside the MIAA? Someone that you guys are, are not used to. Well, it's different. You know, I've been here for two years and two seasons now, and you play the same people. You know, week in, week out. You know, and. It, so it's good because you actually, I mean, it's, it's great, you know, because when you study uh, other teams, you learn things that, you know, other teams have done against them that actually can give you some ideas for the future. And that's what you do in the springs. You go out and try to figure out what everybody else is doing. Now we're going into another conference. You get to see all their games. We exchange every game with them. So we know we saw, we've watched every single game on them. And I'm sure they have as, uh, with us as well. But it's, uh, it's, it, it'll be good. It's, it's different. Uh, there's no connection there at all. It's just, hey, it's me versus you. Let's go. Let's see what happens. How did you guys utilize this practice time? Anything different from the regular season? Uh, well, we got the three extra weeks, you know. So what we did um, the first week, uh, we lit, we continued to get the lift. So we got three extra weeks of lifting <laughs> with our kids. So we're getting caught up, you know, and definitely making sure that we're trying to get ahead uh, of the game and that. But we practiced twice the first week, three times the second week, and then we'll go, you know, four to five practices this week. But what we did was cool is that we we involved a lot of our, our second team and third team guys. You know, we've got some linebackers and some tight ends that have played a little bit, maybe 40, 50 snaps mm -hmm. game, but have a lot. Next year, they're going to be playing a lot. Yeah. So what we did at the end of all of our practices is we added all those in and we did some big major scrimmages, 50 to 60 play scrimmages, giving those guys reps and giving them more experience. Now that was going to be very beneficial down the line now. It's fun to talk X's nose again. Let's uh, let's go ahead and dive into this matchup between Missouri Western and Southern Arkansas. Very even matchup. Two great defensive teams. They have one of the nation's top D linemen. We were talking about Devondrick Lyson, also one of the best names in the nation. He had 18 <laughs> tackles for loss this year. Their top receiver, another all-name uh, team there, K. Ronce Higgins. He's a Harlan Hill finalist for the top player in Division Two. He had 100 yards per game, nine scores. Just what do you make of this uh, this Mule Riders team? A uh, very talented team. Uh, got a you know senior-led uh, quarterback that's had a lot of experience, and he runs the offense really well. Very, very versatile. They extend plays. They make things happen on third down. They they extend the drives on third down. So we're gonna have to play really well defensively there. Um, and they do have some electric players. You know, their defensive end is very talented. Very, very talented. He makes a lot of plays. Makes it difficult. You got to know where he's at, what he's doing at all times. Um, and then the receiver just can take the top off. I mean, at any time. So we, we're going to have to make sure that we play very fundamentally sound, use our technique really well, um, and be aware where those guys are at. And you know, some of our you know, we'll have some game plan stuff, some strategies to um, try to help. You know, with you know, obviously with the speed uh, of the receiver, but you know, defensively, you know, offensively as well as too, we'll try to help maybe do some more different protections or different things to try to help you know, our offensive line. But they're, they're both electric. You know, I think if we can control them and, and kind of control the game and not let the quarterback feel really, really comfortable, you know, we're going to have a really good chance to win the football game. Now through watching film, have you sensed uh, a common theme just about how great American teams play? Is there, what's different between the Great American Conference and the MIAA? Um, you know, you, you, I kind of watch it more choppy. You don't watch full games when you watch yeah. cut up, so it's kind of hard to answer that for you. 
Um, I think what they do, you know, I think that conference, um, they've got some really talented players, um, just like the MIAAs. I think it's very similar. I think some of the, there's a little bit of a size issue. I think maybe the MIAA has a few different bigger players, mm -hmm. but they, I think they have, if you watch, they've got a little bit, a few more electric players, okay. I guess you would say. So, um, athlete wise, they might be just a tad bit uh, more versatile, you know, than the MIAA, but uh, physicality wise with bigness and, the linebacker size and all that stuff, it's its probably, you know, the upper advantage of the MIAA. And, and don't go and get this conference wrong. They have the, the top seed in the in the Super Region, uh, Washtenaw Baptist. They're about to host uh, the Super Region 3 final coming up this week and definitely some other yeah, talented teams down there. They're a really good team. i got a good, good couple good friends on that staff as well, and uh, they, they do a really good job there. Run the, they run the ball really, really well, and um, um, they've had a lot of success, so we'll see. And then I've gotten the sense just being around these guys that – the, they're, yeah, you guys are happy to get back to the postseason, but not just satisfied with playing for a goal bowl game. Just talk about the hunger that you see in these guys of uh, wanting to end this season on a strong note and build some momentum going into uh, into this offseason and into 2019. Well, I think you, know, you always talk about as a coach, I mean, we do as uh, this staff tremendously, is that we we talk about finishing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and we played, we played really, really hard, and we played all the way to the end of the last game that we played just didn't end up the way we mm -hmm. wanted it to. So this is another opportunity. We talk about opportunities with our guys. Um, you don't have many. There are some, but when you do have the opportunity, you need to take advantage of it and not close the door on it. So this is an opportunity that was opened up to us to be able to play in this bowl game, extend our seniors um, uh, another game that they get to play that they normally wouldn't have. And then also just to extend our competitiveness, you know, because we want to compete, we want to win, we want to drive. That's that's why you play this game. If you weren't competitive, you wouldn't. No one would play football. I mean, it's you go out there and you try to win. It's just another opportunity to be put on the stage, go one on one with another team, and see who's going to come out as a winner. But it's it, it's it's fun. The excitement is there. Our kids are excited to get back. We had a little bit of some travel issues with, with the, we had a little bit of snow. Obviously, everybody knows that, yeah. and uh, the airport was shut down. So we've had a few issues with that, but we're going to have a really good practice tonight. Mm -hmm. Now, make sure, uh, speaking of excitement, don't go anywhere because we've got a special story coming up on the other side of the break. Coming up next, the story on Western sophomore Tyler Baskett's journey back to football, his voyage to making his own name, and his will to bring the Griffins back to the promised land in the postseason. That story coming up after the break. You're watching Griffin Sports Spotlight on Fox 26 KNPN. Celebrities go undercover. Grammy winners, Emmy winners, and Hall of Fame players. In television's biggest guessing game ever. Bella Hadid. P. Diddy. Paul Abdul. This show is messing with my mind. The Masked Singer premieres Wednesday, January 2nd. I have a feeling I know who you are. On Fox. It's that time of year again. The enrollment period for Medicare D begins October 15th. Hi, I'm Debbie, and I can guide you through this complicated process. I'll help you choose the best plan for you regardless if you're a Rogers customer or not. Unlike some insurance agents, we don't receive any type of commission to try to sway you to a particular plan. We want you to be happy with your plan and understand it from day one. Call me and set up an appointment. I'm here to take the confusion out of Medicare D. Matter of fact with Soledad O'Brien. No matter where you stand on the issues, this is the place to come for conversations that will challenge your views and those of elected leaders, thought leaders, and future leaders. It's a face-off with the facts. Sundays at 10 a.m. on NBC 21 KNPG. News Press and Gazette Company has several exciting sales career opportunities available. For a complete list of openings, visit our website at npgco.com careers. Welcome back into Griffin Sports Pilot. I'm Brandon Zenner. He is football coach Matt Williamson. Now, coach, before I get into his story, just tell me your first impression of Tyler Baskin. You came in here. He was a, a redshirt freshman in his second year on campus. Uh, what was your first impression of Tyler Baskin as, uh, as you were taking over this football program? I didn't really have much too high of a thoughts on him because he's a really quiet kid. Uh -huh. When you get to know him, he's a quiet kid. He was, you know, he's tall, but he was probably 220 pounds, 215 pounds, and 
it's getting to know him, you know, it's hard to get him to talk. And then once he, I think once he trusted us and, and, and felt comfortable with us, he, he's opened up and it's been, that, you know, inspired our team tremendously with the things that he's done, his work ethic and what he does. But um, as we got here, I have nothing but great things to say about the kid. Um, and it, it only keeps continuing to get better. I mean, he's never, he's never hit a dull spot or he's never, I mean, he's never teeter. I mean, he just, he keeps climbing us who he is. That's what he does. And that, I mean, that's Tyler Baskin. So Tyler Bask, in case you don't know, he's a sophomore from Park Hill South. He was third team all conference this year. Austin Basket was an all-conference pass rusher for the Griffins the last time Western went to the postseason in 2012 when he was a junior. And while he followed his brother's path to Missouri Western, Tyler plans to leave his own legacy. Final minutes, same score, Bearcats with the ball, trying to drive forward, instead going backwards. Adams sacked by Austin Baska. The home fans going ballistic. They sense the upset, and they now likely control their own playoff destiny with an emotional win over their biggest rival. It's cool to follow him here, but in terms of like following in his footsteps, that's not really what I'm, I'm here to do. I'm here to, I'm here to make a name for myself. I just remember why I would always come up here with my friends and we'd always find a way to sneak into this place and we'd just, we'd like throw the football around during the games, during halftime. It's cool being able to do what my brother was able to do. Coach Horn was actually my coach in high school for my freshman and sophomore year. And then whenever I first met him here, I, I don't even think he remembered me. He would always remind me of my antics when I got here because I forgot that I coached a kid. I like watching him just because of defensive line and be violent with him and, and he's on top of that and uh, can't be just uh, the average Joe and say hey go play interior defensive line you got to be you got to be a pretty tough dude and that's you know he's the ultimate team player and that's what that's what you want you want to try you want everyone on your team to be like that the more they are people people look up to him people you know um, he leads by example and leads vocally and, and it's a uh, very impressive very impressive characteristics that he has just a real good human being but Tyler man he does his uh, he does everything right you know what I mean he he plays hard, he works hard, uh, he, his academics, he does that hard. You know, I go to class checking just to have fun, and he's always there. He's always doing the right thing. He's always... Do you cherish the moments because you know you don't have them. Uh, well, all throughout high school and my... Gotten a concussion a lot, basically like once a year. And after I got one last year, uh, me and my family just decided that it was probably best if I don't play. You know, like you know, he came in and you know he had a few concussions and felt that he might you know might want to hang it up and uh, ended up deciding uh, that he would. It was like just melted. I mean, he was like. He walks around with like a ten, you know, like a tenseness in him, like you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm Basque. I'm gonna, you know, I'm a bit one bad dude. And when he came in there, it was just, you know, he just, you know, like the energy was out of him, and, he, and it was, it was really, really tough for him. We talked for a long time, you know, about it, and we, he sat in that office that day, and it was, it was an emotional day. When he stepped away, it was tough because you knew it was the best thing for him to go and find out for himself, you know. And when we had that conversation, you know, tears in his eyes, I knew right then the passion in the kid didn't want to do it. I told him, the only person that's in your body is you. The only person that has to make this hard decision is you. And he made the decision to go away from a while. It's like grieving over a wife or something that's died, or your grandmother's died. He's, he grieved over the game. And uh, he stepped away from it and missed um, missed some time with us, uh, I think probably about three months or so. Um, but you could always see him around. You know, it was like he was in, like looking over. You just always saw his head pop up, and you could tell that he missed it. Just going there every day, just... Like just it progressively got to got to me. Like I just couldn't I couldn't stop playing. Like it just the urge just was inside me. I don't know. I'm just I'm just sitting there like I wish I could I wish I could be out there with you guys. He just walked in my office one day and said, Hey, I wanna do it again. I'm like, wait, well, hey, what a say, are you are you sure? He's like, coach, I just can't let it go. I don't I don't know what to do with myself after having football every single day for every year for the past eight years. This is something I really want to do. I really want to finish my career here. I just miss it all. I got to get it back. And that's that's what you want. That's Missouri Western football right there. Yeah! Yeah! That was freaking losing move! I want to 
want to be known as one of the best D-linemen that's been at Missouri Western. That's what, that's what I'm working on get, getting towards. Every aspect and all the different characteristics that you look for in a player, um, he's right there. You can tell how he plays now, that when he made that decision and going through that time of his life, he gained a passion that's is just indescribable. He's came back with a vengeance since then. It's been pretty cool to watch him. And we got to get guys like that. You're really not coaching them. You're just yelling at them a lot just so you can, you know, make yourself feel right and make them feel wrong. <laughs> I think Tyler's probably the face of, of Missouri Western, what we're, we're trying to accomplish and what we're trying to um, build as a, as a, as a whole program. Um, Man, I want my daughter to marry somebody like that. I want my daughter to be around somebody like that because he's always positive, you know, he's always doing his job. You know, and he's always going to work hard. You, you don't have to turn the lights on to see if he's working. You never have to check over his shoulder to see if he's working. He's working all the time. And that's what's going to change Missouri Western football. I don't want to just be known as Baskin's brother. I think that lingers over his head. And, you know, I've been in that position before where you got this All-American All-Star brother and you're playing the same sport. So it's never Tyler. It's always, oh, you're just his brother, you know. And I think Tyler wants to step out of that shell and step out of that background. Like, I'm not just his brother. I'm coming to be the man. He's going to step out of that shadow. And it's my job to make sure that before Tyler Baskin leaves here, he's going to be the best defensive lineman to come to Missouri West. I mean, considering we're not doing what that team did it's still it's still cool to be able to go into the postseason in college but I think overall until we get to a conference championship we won't we won't have that same feeling I think we're on the right path progressively since I've been here we've just gotten better and better and closer as a team next year I think I mean everyone says that that next year is going to be the year but I really do think next year is going to be the year I mean I've we plan on going out there and winning. I, I, I personally hope that I can dominate their line. That's always the plan. I feel like I can. I feel like the rest of our D-line has the ability to do that. I feel like our whole team does. Coach, Tyler Bass is one pretty <laughs> cool dude, isn't he? He is. He's fun to be around. It's, he's, you ask for a, a kid like, hey, I, you know, the specific player, coach's player, making things happen, working hard, everything. He fills it up all the way to the top of the tank. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to be around him. Now, uh, it's evident how much he means to this team, how much he means to you and Coach Horn. Take me back to week two. You guys beat number five, Fort Hayes State. This one of, one of the best wins in program history. And recently, and after the game, you had many players who had great games that day, James Husky, Dom Marino, all those guys. But you picked Tyler Baska to ring the bell to signify the first win of 2018. Just tell me why. Well, I just think, you know, ringing the bell, you know, you, obviously we, we win. We ring the bell when we win. Um, but it, the person that rings the bell is not because you had four touchdowns. Yeah. It's not because it, it has a special mo moment to it. And real what it is is obviously that player, he did have a very good game. He played very well. But what he does on and off the field and in the weight room and the classroom is the exact example yeah. of what we want in Missouri Western. And so those are the guys. Guys that are doing that the all-around players and then having success on the field that night is why I let him do that. And the biggest thing, you know, uh, with him is that, you know, I have a lot of respect for him, just him coming through and stepping away from the game, seeing how much it crushed him, and then fighting back and then taking his whole work ethic to a whole nother level once he got back on our team. I just got a lot of respect for the kid. I got a lot of respect for people that can do that. You know, they just, that, that, that they're committed and their effort is, is unparalleled. Mm -hmm. Now, many thanks to Tyler and Scorpio as well as your coach for sitting down to tell his story. Tyler, thank you very much. It was, uh, it was very fun speaking with you. Now, still ahead, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up our talk with Coach Willie here as we look ahead to Bull Week one more time. You're watching Griffin Sports Spotlight here on Fox 26 KNPN. The grocery giveaway is here. Every Wednesday in November, we'll be giving away a $100 grocery gift card, and an additional gift card will go to the local food bank of the winner's choice. Go to newspressnow.com grocery to enter today. You can be a part of the news team by sharing with News Press Now. Download the News Press Now app. Tap the share tab and send us your pics, videos, and story ideas. Be seen. Be heard. Share with News Press Now. 
Hi folks, Chris Yates at Victor Chevrolet in Savannah. We know what it takes to be number one in customer satisfaction. It takes great inventory, a knowledgeable staff, and great prices. But more importantly, it takes the willingness to do what is right for our customers. I'm here to tell you about our guaranteed credit premier plan. Our program is designed not only to get you into reliable transportation at a great price, but to help our customers build their credit and change their lives. Our team has worked hard to get you approved regardless of your credit history. Call now to take advantage of this great program and become part of the Victory family. Voice. 12 celebrities go undercover. Grammy winners, Emmy winners, and Hall of Fame players. In television's biggest guessing game ever. Bella Hadid. P. Diddy. Paul Abdul. The show is messing with my mind. The Masked Singer premieres Wednesday, January 2nd. I have a feeling I know who you are. On Fox. Intensity and the energy and the spirit of, the, of this, this Griffin football team, and it, it's going to continue to grow and become more and more powerful. Something else. <laughs> <laughs> he is. It was, he makes it personal, though. He's a he's a good job coaching our D line, and he's got them playing at a high level, and and got them playing together as a unit. Yeah, Scorpio is a lot of fun. Welcome back into Griffin Sports Spotlight. I'm Brandon Center. He is football coach Matt Williams, and the Griffins will tee it up one last time in 2018 this Saturday noon kickoff between Western and Southern Arkansas. The Mule Riders down at Texarkana, Arkansas. Agent Barry Live United Bowl. Coach, you guys are uh, already really close to the team, but just this extra practice time, it's beneficial obviously for the players, but just for the chemistry of these guys that are coming back, uh, how beneficial is it just getting everybody in this setting, uh, preparing for some postseason basketball or base uh, football? Well, we're <laughs> so, on all sports. Though, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, it's, it's really, really good uh, because when you look at it, and I talk about this, is that you, this team, this group of guys, are only allotted in their life to play 11 games together. That's it, guaranteed. And we're getting to play another 12th game together. Next year, they'll be some of the same, but not the exact yeah. same players. So that's a special moment. And to be able to hang around here, we stayed a couple of extra days uh, on campus. We had a couple, you know, dinners um, at night. Played a couple games. Had a couple. We did some really cool stuff to to hang out with one another. And and that's what this team is all about. Like I. I've is it when we break at the end you know I say mix it up we usually mix it up everybody kind of shakes offense and defense shakes hands and gets together it, it's almost but they do I mean I'll sit there for 10 minutes before I even can blow the whistle and get them talk they just like being around each other and and that's what that's the biggest thing probably one of the biggest things that's grown is our chemistry on our team what do you see in these 16 years uh, didn't at uh, Lindenwood game we've talked about it didn't end uh, as anyone hoped or planned but what do you sense in uh and these guys wanting to, to finish strong. One last oh, there's a hunger to compete, hunger to win. You obviously want to win, uh, end, your, end your season on a win. You know, I mean, everybody else's season usually, um, you know, if you win in the national championships, the only time you actually end up winning for sure your last game of the season. So uh, it, it's good for them to get back out there, compete with one another, and it gives them another redemption, obviously, a, an opportunity like we talked about before that one last time to make a play, make a difference, and lead their team to success. No, I don't want to bring up too many bad memories, but as I said, Linda Wood scored 21 unanswered in the fourth, beat Western 27-23 November 10th, that season finale. They had a chance at the final drive, and I asked seniors Keelan Mack and Dom Reno about what it was like taking for what they thought might be their last drive as a collegiate football player. Take a listen. It was an unreal feeling. Cause I, didn't, I mean, I was always thinking about that, how I was going to feel the last drive in my college career. and. Especially like today, we got put in a position where it was really crunch time. So, I mean, um, like I said, I just wanted to leave it all out for my brothers. You know, like my teammates, they've always been there for me, been there for me in times where I didn't know what to do, been there for me in times where, I mean, it was 4 o'clock in the morning, we're working out, nobody else is awake, been for me in times where I just felt like I was most vulnerable, so I could never repay my team back, but just get my efforts. <clears throat> but our guys kept fighting, so I think that's what kept us alive. Um, so I, I'll, I'll wear that one, but... Um, you know, as, as the game went on, I just I, I looked in everyone's eyes and, and I could see that, that we were ready to, <clears throat> we were ready to fight the whole the whole game. Even even when they scored last in that last uh, minute, 
um, we knew it wasn't over, and, we, and as you can see, you know, we, we kept battling, so you can't ask for much more than that. Now, Coach, most of these guys are going to be playing their final game on Saturday. Some will get uh, opportunities elsewhere to continue your careers, but not most of them. Just uh, you, you said before we talked you didn't want to <laughs> need to bring up uh, the last game of your career, but it was a 25-21 loss to, to Missouri Rolla, November 11th. 1995, Coach, you're still very, very young. You're All-American oh senior gosh. year. Where'd you find those pictures at? <laughs> uh, courtesy of Ryan Menley at Missouri. Oh, Western. okay, man. But uh, where, uh, where, what do you remember about your final game uh, wearing a Western uniform? Oh, it was, it was tough. We obviously lost to Rolla, and, um, and it wasn't a good ending because if we'd have won that game, we would have made it to the playoffs that year, and um, it would have been uh, a postseason play for us. But ended up, the worst thing, to be honest with you, you know, when the game was over, it's, you know, kind of gets a little surreal then. It's not, as a college football, it's not until you see your team play the next year knowing that you can't even put on a suit or put on a helmet and even stand on the sideline. That's, that's when it gets for real, like slaps you in the face, and you're like, man, I don't, because there's no, you can't play a pickup football game when you're 35, 40 years old. You can play pickup basketball. You can play pickup. You might be able to. Heck, Menley, he plays pickup baseball every once in a while. He's 40 years old, and he's playing baseball. So, he said he's 37. Oh, yeah. All right. I wanted to round it up a little bit. Um, but, no, it's, it's in the game of football, once, once it's done, it's done. There's, I mean, you can play some, maybe some flag football in the back or, so just that opportunity and just, just to ha have, have an opportunity for these kids to play like I did and then some other, obviously a lot of kids across the country as well too, one more game. Just one more game. That's, that's everybody asked for is that, hey, man, you know, if I can get 12 instead of 11, man, you just want one more of everything. Everybody wants that. But this is one more game, one more game to win, one more game to come after an opponent, one more game to compete. And then finish, just like both those guys talk. That's what we finish here. We're not going to give up. Sometimes it doesn't end up like you want at the end, but we're going to fight, scratch, and claw as hard as we possibly can. Now, you got the boots on. I hope you bring a cowboy hat and maybe a couple flannels because uh, you're going down <laughs> into the south. Right by Arkansas and Texarkana, Arkansas. Coach, thanks. Best of luck. Go get them in the Live United Bowl on right. Saturday. Western. Looks to end its season on a win. We'll have much more on that coming up next week as well as the start of MIAA basketball with Sundance Wicks and Rob Evanson. Make sure to join us yet again next week. You've been watching Griffin Sports Spotlight on Fox 26 KNPN. Good drive at the end through one yard line. Rister scrambles to his left side. He will take off and run to the five, and he will dive to the pylon. He's in. Touchdown, Lindenwood, to make this a one-score football game. Here we go. This is the football game. The onside kick going to go to the far side left again. It